Hello everyone and welcome to Varanger, Finnmark. As far north and as far east as you can physically get on mainland Norway. For the next week or so I'll be travelling around with my good friend Shalg and we'll be photographing the true specialists of this unforgiving place high up in the Arctic. Now, there couldn't really have been any better species to start off this trip with photographing than the one I'm trying to stalk right now. And that is the purple sandpiper. It's a small wading bird and it lives on the beaches up here in the north. It's, it's quite a special wading bird because it's the only wading bird that overwinters here in great numbers in Norway. All other wading birds migrate south to warmer places to stay for the winter. Whereas these guys, they tough out the brutal conditions and they manage to make a living on these remote beaches. A wonderful thing about the purple sandpiper is its tolerance towards humans because as long as you keep a low profile and you're a little cautious with your approach you can get really close to them and they won't even bother about you at all. So right now there's this flock of about 30 individuals uh, they're just resting and uh, they don't care at all that I'm right next to them and just enjoying this moment in their presence. So this is really great. It's a beautiful new day in the Arctic and my initial plan for today was to head to a Kittiwake colony and try and photograph them by sunrise. But as you can see behind me, the sun has risen and I'm not at the Kittiwake colony. The reason for that is that every time I spot a willow ptarmigan by the road, I stop to try and photograph them. 
uh, because they're a species that I've tried to work with for a long time and rarely succeeded. So here, since they're so numerous, I see them plotted all along the road. But don't misunderstand and think that it's easy uh, because the very large majority of the birds here uh, fly away instantly. But with persistence, patience and a bit of luck, it's definitely possible to photograph them. I've now arrived at the Kittywick colony. Uh, unfortunately, because of my delay due to the uh, willow timing in the photography, uh, the sun is already quite high in the sky, resulting in rather harsh light and not necessarily the best images. Uh, but still, it's great to be out here and, uh, and experiencing this new place and uh, just taking it all in, taking in the smells, which are pretty awful and the sounds uh, and the views such great gatherings of birds can't be found many places so this is truly special For some reason beyond my understanding, some of the nest sites in the bird cliff behind me are prized higher than others and settling who gets where to place their nest often requires a fight and uh, when fights break out between these guys they can be really intense and really really brutal. They often go on and on and on and uh, they tumble down together and in some few cases the fights can result in death for the birds so when the kittiwakes risk their lives for a nest site you can try to grasp just how important it is to them
After a few hours at the Kittiwake colony, Shalg and I took to the road. As the hours passed, the scenery drastically changed from a rugged, endless tundra to the peacefulness and tranquility of the deep woods of Poswick. After about four hours drive, we finally made it to our location for today. Uh, we are deep within the forests of Finnmark. Now, what I find really interesting about being in the wild tiger is that you often have to walk far between each wildlife encounter, but almost every single one of them is special because the few species that manage to thrive here are so fascinating in my eyes. So for the next few hours, we'll sit here and wait for things to start moving about and hopefully enjoy the company of some really specialized birds. That's a Siberian tit. I've actually only seen two in my entire life before this one. Let's try and get some images. Another amazing thing about some of these birds, in particular the Siberian tit and the pine grosbeak, is that they lack any fear of humans. So as long as you move cautiously and uh, approach them with respect, you can get really, really close. And actually, I was just standing right next to the feeder and a Siberian tit landed on the feeder as I was standing by it and it was just like 20 centimeters away from me. Wow. It's just such a beautiful landscape. Thank you. 